If you're involved in corporate governance or strategy or maybe risk management, you definitely know artificial intelligence isn't just some footnote in the IP budget anymore. No, not at all. You could argue it's the single most important factor shaping well competitive survival this decade. That's absolutely right. And, you know, based on the sources we've looked at for you, the conversation, it's officially shifted. It's moved past just innovation and landed, well, squarely on liability. Liability, okay. Yeah, AI isn't just some incremental tech upgrade. It's a systemic force multiplier. It dramatically amplifies risk. So our mission today is to uh, cut through the noise and really analyze the board's fiduciary imperative. Okay, that term fiduciary imperative, what does that mean in practice? It means the ultimate non-delegable accountability for AI governance, for strategy, and for risk management. You just can't pass the buck on this one. Right. So we're talking about moving from just being aware of AI to active accountability. <laughs> and the data we pulled, it shows an immediate, pretty acute problem. Experts are calling it the governance gap. It's a really dangerous disconnect. I mean, look, AI's strategic importance is everywhere, right? Nearly every major company is adopting generative AI now. Mm -hmm. But despite that, 31% of corporate boards still don't consistently put AI on their regular agenda. It's treated like uh, an optional topic, not the continuous risk factor it actually is. Wow, 31%. Yeah. And um, here's the real kicker, right? The statistical confluence, as they call it, that seems to create a direct path to liability for directors. Yeah, this is the startling number. Two thirds of respondents, that's 66%, say their current boards have limited to no knowledge or experience with AI. 66%. Think about that for a second. You've got rapid tech adoptions speeding up enterprise risk, and the very people legally obligated to oversee that risk, they're largely illiterate about the tech itself. That sounds bad. It is bad. If directors can't even comprehend mission-critical risks like, say, potential civil rights violations from algorithmic bias or maybe catastrophic data misuse, they fundamentally fail the legal standard of due care. Okay, let's stop right there. You mentioned legal standard liability. Let's define that risk immediately. When we talk about directors facing liability for failing to monitor compliance, what exactly are we talking about, legally speaking? Okay, so we're talking about the U.S. Caremark standard. Put simply, under Caremark, directors usually aren't liable just for making a bad business call. That happens. Right. Business judgment rule. Exactly. They become liable for failing to build or, crucially, monitor the systems designed to detect and prevent mission-critical legal risks and deficient AI governance, like failing to set up those auditable frameworks, those reporting systems. Legal experts are now explicitly calling that a mission-critical failure to monitor. So it's not about predicting the future perfectly. It's about having the systems in place to watch for trouble. Precisely. Which makes this a boardroom emergency, frankly. Okay, so that's the stick. Let's talk about the carrot. Let's transition from avoiding disaster to, well, seizing the opportunity. Boards need to move past those little isolated AI pilot programs and get into scalable deployment, right? If the risk of ignorance is high, the cost of lagging strategically must also be huge. Oh, it is immense. The main strategic goal here is alignment. Boards have got to ensure AI initiatives map directly to the company's long-term vision. But, you know, the data shows most companies are still thinking pretty small. How so? Well, over three quarters of respondents say the top benefit they see from Gen AI adoption right now is optimizing operations, you know, efficiency, productivity gains, cost savings. Which is valuable, of course, but if everyone's just chasing the same efficiency gains, doesn't that just become a race to the bottom eventually? Exactly. That's the critical distinction the board must enforce. They need to see AI as a force amplifier. The real strategic imperative isn't just cutting costs. It's using AI to fundamentally expand market share or introduce entirely new products or maybe deliver services in ways that are unique, proprietary, hard for competitors to copy. So changing the game not just playing it slightly better. That's it. If you're not doing this, the competitive gap just widens exponentially. You're not just saving a bit of money. You could be changing the basic economics of your industry. Okay. And if generative AI is the main engine driving this for simplification, what's the absolute bedrock requirement? The thing boards need to fund and watch like hawks? Data readiness. Simple as that. Gen AI is only as good as the data you feed it. The sources are absolutely clear on this. The biggest bottleneck to getting real strategic value from AI isn't the algorithm, it's poor data governance. Right, the plumbing underneath it all. Exactly. Boards must allocate serious capital expenditure. We're talking infrastructure that enables high quality data governance, 
rigorous data lineage tracking, so you know exactly where the data came from, and of course, robust cybersecurity measures. Without clean, well-governed data, the strategic potential of Gen AI, it's basically zeroed out. And this kind of shift, it impacts everyone in the organization, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Boards must have a huge oversight role when it comes to human capital, the talent strategy. Absolutely massive. It means the board has to demand proactive investment in retraining the existing workforce. You've got to build pipelines for specialized digital talent people who can actually manage and integrate these complex systems. And compensation. Ah, uh, yes. Crucially, the compensation committee needs to step up and adjust executive incentive structures. We need AI-related key performance indicators, KPIs, specifically for senior executives. So tie their bonuses to this. Yes. Link the responsible and strategic deployment of AI directly to their accountability and their compensation. If the CEO isn't prioritizing this strategically, well, their pay package should probably reflect that lack of performance. Okay. So we've established the why, why boards absolutely have to act now. Now we need the how. How do boards move from just, you know, general concern to concrete, auditable, and legally defensible oversight? This sounds like where frameworks and principles become non-negotiable. This is exactly where we codify trust. We make it real. Boards should mandate adherence to foundational ethical standards. Things like the OECD AI principles, they emphasize accountability, security, transparency, basic stuff but crucial. And internally. Internally, management needs to adopt specific alignment frameworks for systems development. One really important one mentioned in the sources is RICE. That stands for robustness, interpretability, controllability, and ethicality. Okay, let's pause on controllability for a second. Yeah. That sounds maybe a bit technical, but it feels critical if you're thinking about legal defense down the line. It is absolutely critical. Controllability means that if something goes wrong, if the AI starts acting weirdly outside its parameters, or if it risks causing harm, the system must allow for human intervention. You need overrides or a way to safely decommission it, shut it down. Like an emergency break. Precisely. A system you can't safely shut down is just a massive operational and legal liability waiting to happen. It's kind of the director's insurance policy against runaway AI models. Got it. But the sources seem to agree. The undisputed gold standard for operational governance the framework that really provides the best legal defense for showing you exercised due care is the NIST AI Risk Management Framework. That's the one, the NIST RMF, released back in January 2023. Now, it's technically voluntary, but adopting this framework is now seen as the undisputed best practice. Boards must mandate that management uses its four core functions as the pillars for all reporting and oversight on AI. Okay, these aren't just buzzwords then. They're management pillars. Exactly. These are management pillars. Walk us through those four pillars and connect them directly back to what the board needs to see and do. Okay. First is govern. This means establishing the right organizational culture, clearly defining roles, setting the policies. For the board, this means mandating an AI-specific code of conduct and ensuring there's formal ownership someone's actually in charge. Makes sense. Number two. Second, map. This is about identifying risks across the entire AI lifecycle. From the moment you ingest the data through development, testing, deployment, and critically, including your third-party vendors who might be supplying AI components. Okay, map the whole territory. Third. Third, measure. You have to assess and track those risks using quantifiable metrics. Boards need real numbers on things like bias levels detected, system failure rates, model drift over time, not just, you know, vague qualitative assurances that everything's fine. Right, show me the data. And the final pillar, manage. Manage is where you prioritize those identified risks and take concrete mitigation actions. This is where you actively address issues like ensuring diversity and inclusion are baked into both the data sets and the teams building the models. By adopting this whole govern map measure manage structure, the board creates that crucial auditable evidence trail. That's what you need to satisfy your fiduciary duties. Okay, that's the framework. Let's dive into some specific threat vectors. Now, the actual dangers that can turn an AI initiative from just a strategic stumble into a full-blown legal disaster. We keep hearing about algorithmic bias. Why does this keep happening? And what's the board's immediate responsibility here? Right, algorithmic bias. It's usually not malicious code, right? It's a bias that's already baked into the historical data used for training the AI. Algorithms are just incredibly efficient amplifiers of systemic discrimination that already exists in society. So it finds bias and makes it bigger faster? Pretty much. And when we look at specific risks, we see 
U.S. regulators, the FTC, the CFPB, the EEOC, they aren't waiting around for new AI laws. They're using existing civil rights laws, like the Fair Credit Reporting Act, to go after bias. They often label unfair outcomes as digital redlining. Digital redlining. So basically discrimination, but, you know, powered by an algorithm. That's a good way to put it, yeah. The board's responsibility. They must mandate regular AI impact assessments and demand the use of specialized bias detection tools before any system gets deployed to customers or affects employees. You check for bias first. Okay, bias is huge. Now let's talk data responsibility and privacy. This feels like an area where the risks get really novel, maybe unexpected. Mm. The sources highlight something called derived attributes. Explain that risk because it sounds a bit esoteric, but potentially really dangerous. It is dangerous, and it's a classic example of an unseen risk. Derived attributes are essentially new data points that the AI generates about users based on the information it has. These new attributes can inadvertently re-identify personal data that was supposed to be anonymized. Wait, so the AI can figure out who someone is, even if you tried to scrub their name? Potentially, yes. Think of it like this. Your system might not have a person's name, but by analyzing, say, their purchasing habits, their location data trails, their search patterns, the AI can create such a detailed profile that's the derived attribute that it effectively re-identifies them or puts them into a very specific sensitive category. So the company basically accidentally unanonymizes its own data through its AI. Wow. Opening itself up to massive liability under privacy laws. Exactly right. Boards have got to oversee policies that specifically guard against this advanced type of exposure. It's often missed by traditional data privacy tools. Okay. And finally, cybersecurity. We said AI is a force amplifier for strategy, but it must also be a force amplifier for cyber risk. What specific cyber threats should the board be focused on here? AI dramatically enlarges the attack surface area. It's not just about protecting the data center anymore. Directors need to get their heads around novel threats like adversarial attacks, where hackers make tiny, subtle changes to input data to trick the model into making a mistake, like misclassifying an image or a transaction. Tricking the AI. Yeah, or model poisoning, where malicious data is deliberately fed into the training process to corrupt the AI's future behavior. This ties directly back to that ricey he framework we mentioned and specifically the R for robustness. The model has to be built to resist these kinds of sophisticated manipulation attempts. And if it gets compromised? The board must verify that mechanisms are in place to safely override or completely decommission a potentially compromised or harmful AI and do it instantly. Back to that emergency break idea. This level of complexity it feels like traditional governance structures might be buckling under the strain. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it demands centralized leadership, which is probably why we're seeing the rise of the chief AI officer, the CAIO. Yes, the creation of the CIO role is really becoming a strategic necessity for many organizations. It often arises because the traditional C-suite roles just don't quite cover it. You know, the CIO is focused on infrastructure, the CISO on security, the CDO on data itself. None might have the full mandate or the scope to centrally manage AI model risk and also drive the strategic direction. So the CIO pulls it all together? Ideally, yes. The CIO centralizes that direction, the risk management piece, and even discipline around third-party AI suppliers. The board's job is to ensure this person is formally accountable and, critically, that they use transparent, standardized frameworks like translating those NIST RMF functions for every single board update, no black boxes. And that accountability has to filter down into the existing board committee structure, right? Yeah. What are the key operational shifts that the audit nominating committees need to make, like right now? Okay, the audit committee. Its role here has become absolutely mission critical. They must oversee the capital allocation for these significant AI investments, and crucially, they need to review how AI risks are being integrated into the company's overall enterprise risk management framework. Let's clarify that for listeners. Integrating into the ERM framework, what does that mean practically? ERM, Enterprise Risk Management, that's the company-wide system for identifying, assessing, and preparing for any risks that could interfere with achieving business objectives. Integrating AI risk means it has to be treated with the same seriousness, the same level of scrutiny as major financial risks or operational risks. It's not an IT side issue anymore. Got it. What else for at it? Furthermore, the audit committee must ensure accurate material AI risk disclosures in public filings, and they need to be actively vigilant against AI washing. AI washing, like greenwashing, but for AI. Exactly. Exaggerating AI capabilities while downplaying or ignoring the associated risks, audit needs to prevent that. Okay. And the nominating committee, they seem to have the biggest structural challenge. 
fixing that massive 66% knowledge gap you mentioned earlier. They absolutely do, and it requires urgent attention. We're talking about board succession planning, actively seeking directors with relevant tech or AI ethics expertise. It means integrating AI literacy requirements into how current directors are evaluated and mandating continuous education for the entire board. AI literacy isn't a nice to have anymore. It's a core component of fulfilling your fiduciary duty. So we've covered the mandate, the strategy, the frameworks, the specific risks, the structure. Let's start to wrap up by reinforcing the legal and global reality that directors are facing today. Yeah, the legal imperative is really quite simple. You must act. As we established earlier, deficient AI governance is now viewed as a clear pathway to director liability under that Caremark standard in the U.S. Boards have to demonstrate they're acting swiftly on any red flags related to AI and that they're adopting recognized best practices like NIST. And globally, things are not standing still. We're seeing a pretty massive divergence in regulatory approaches, which must force global companies to operate at the highest common denominator. That's precisely. Look at the EU AI Act. That's a binding regulation. It classifies AI systems by risk level high, medium low, and it mandates specific compliance actions for high risk systems. This is effectively setting a global standard for mandatory oversight. Whereas the U.S. is different. The U.S. approach at the federal level is much more fragmented. We're relying mostly on sector specific regulators like the FTC, EEOC using existing laws. This often means enforcement happens after the harm occurs, what they call ex post enforcement, which paradoxically puts even more pressure on companies to be proactive with their risk management to avoid being the next enforcement target. And the states aren't waiting for D.C. Not at all. Yeah. Look at the Colorado AI Act, enacted just in May 2024. That's the first really comprehensive state-level AI legislation in the U.S., and many believe it could serve as a template for other states. So a patchwork is emerging. A complex patchwork. And this proliferation of state and global mandates means that adopting recognized global standards like the NIST RMF, like right. the OECD principles, and then translating them into your own internal auditable policies. Well, that's basically the only viable legal defense strategy available right now against regulatory scrutiny or litigation. This has been a really critical deep dive. Let's try to summarize the whole journey by focusing on maybe the three non-negotiable phases of governance we've uncovered here. Okay, I think it starts with a mindset shift. Yeah. Phase one, boards have got to mandate immediate AI literacy for themselves and integrate AI deeply into the long-term corporate strategy. And crucially, linking executive compensation, those KPIs, to responsible AI deployment. Okay, mindset shift first. Then, then comes the infrastructure build, phase two. This means actually allocating the capital expenditure needed to elevate data governance, adopting the NIST RMF as the core standard for risk reporting, and requiring those bias mitigation tools and checks for all significant AI systems build the foundation. Mindset infrastructure. What's the third phase? And finally, the accountability enforcer. Phase three. This requires establishing clear formal ownership, ideally through that chief AI officer role we discussed, and updating the audit committee charter specifically to oversee AI risk integration into the ERM framework and to ensure accurate public disclosure that formalizes your legal defense. The ultimate conclusion seems pretty unmistakable then. Delegating the implementation of AI absolutely does not absolve the board of its ultimate oversight responsibility. Mm -hmm. Board competence in AI is now mandatory, not just ceremonial. It truly is the new fiduciary frontier, no question. And that leaves us with one final, maybe provocative thought for you or a listener to chew on. Given that the board is ultimately liable for major AI failures, but as we heard, two-thirds currently lack foundational literacy, how long do you think it will be before a major AI-related systemic failure Maybe a corporate collapse, maybe a huge civil rights disaster forces mandatory federal literacy and compliance requirements onto corporate boards. Similar, perhaps, to the financial reporting standards we saw mandated after the big accounting scandals in the early 2000s. Mm. Is voluntary best practice actually moving fast enough to meet what is rapidly becoming legally binding risk? That is the essential race against time that I think every single corporate director is currently running, whether they fully realize it yet or not. Till next time. Keep digging deep and stay well informed.